Krima Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. Government's efforts to advance South Africa's manufacturing capability and boost the country's international competitiveness through incentive mechanisms was in evidence last month as a new high-voltage cable manufacturing facility, partly funded by government, was officially introduced to the market. Natalie Grieve has the story. The 150 million rand CBI Electric African Cables facility in Vereniging is set to become the first in sub-Saharan Africa to design and manufacture HV underground electric cables up to 275 kilovolts or kV with conductor sizes of up to 2,500 square millimeters. These cables would enable large South African energy consumers, such as municipalities and metropoles, to achieve a distribution of up to 350 MVA at 132 kV and 547 MVA at 275 kV on a single cable circuit. CBI CEO Alan Dixon said at the launch of the facility that the plant and machinery had been funded by shareholders and further supported by the Department of Trade and Industries Manufacturing Competitiveness Enhancement Programme, or MSEP, which contributed 35% or 45 million rand of the total capital investment. The DTI was absolutely fundamental in the provision of capital for this project. They supplied some 35% of the total capital that went into this project and have been increasingly supportive of local industry over the last five years and remain a very key stakeholder in South African manufacturing and industry. So welcome to you and the team. He noted that South Africa's growing electricity demand, as well as the group's longer-term intention to expand into Africa, further bolstered the argument for the capacity expansion. The African continent was opening up, and if we, as South African manufacturers, wanted to retain our mantle as being the best manufacturers in, in Africa, we had to make sure we had the product range, the capability and the cost base to make sure we could compete with the best that the rest of the world was going to take the fight to us within Africa. Also speaking at the launch, Trade and Industry Minister Dr Rob Davies described the facility as a concrete example of government's efforts to boost industrialization in South Africa through bolder support programs and interventions. Well, I think that this new um, high voltage cable line uh, has benefited from a number of uh, measures that we've introduced under the Industrial Policy Action Plan. Firstly, we have designated uh, uh, electricity transmission lines. 90% uh, of the uh, components have to come from locally manufactured sources. Uh, and uh, that is uh, something which has benefited them. They've also benefited from the rollout of the Renewable Energy Program, uh, which has uh, created a demand for their products. Uh, we're also investigating a, a tariff uh, and uh, we're stepping up our work on looking at substandard products which are competing unfairly with, uh, with their facilities. But we've said that uh, in addition to that, what we are looking at is to support companies to become competitive. Uh, and so uh, this uh, particular investment has benefited from the Manufacturing Competitiveness Enhancement Program uh, to the tune of 45 million rand. So the new facility which uh, we opened this morning uh, has uh, been a facility which is a product of our work on a number of fronts, but very directly from the support which we've provided under the Manufacturing Competitiveness Enhancement Program. So um, I think it's a, an example in microcosm of uh, how manufacturing has been able to make progress with the support of the various uh, facilities that government has provided to support manufacturers over the last five years. The first recipient of the cables from the facility would be the city of Cape Town, which would receive a 132 kilovolt, 1,600 square millimeter underground cable system in June, while CBI was also currently involved in installing a 400 kV cable system at state-owned power utility ESCOM's Ingula Pant storage system in KwaZulu-Natal. Other news making headlines this week, the Chinese outline their plans for the mammoth 84 billion rand Modafontaine city. The NDP's infrastructure plans bring opportunity but also risk, and the export strategy is given greater weight in South Africa's new industrial plan. Hong Kong listed property development group Shanghai Zendai has outlined ambitious plans for the development of an 84 billion rand 22 square kilometer city. On the sprawling Modafontaine property, the company bought from South African Chemicals Group AECI for 1 billion rand in November. Therefore, we're looking forward to this project, that it will be a project that will make the people of Alexander across the road not to come here and be job seekers, but also to come here and become part of those who are in charge of this major development, 
because of the ideology of the project, but also because of the political understanding that the bilateral agreement emanates also from the historical relationship of the African National Congress together with the Communist Party of China. Public protector advocate Tuli Madonsela says that while the National Development Plan and its emphasis on infrastructure development provide significant opportunities for engineers, that opportunity also comes with great risk. And the National Development Plan places a lot of emphasis on infrastructure development. And that's a great opportunity for our country and a great opportunity for professionals from all walks of life, lawyers, engineers, not just civil engineers, various kinds of engineers, that's a great opportunity. But there's also great risks. As we go into infrastructure development, there's great risks in terms of things not being done according to spec, not being done on time, and sometimes not being done at all. The South African government's latest industrial policy action plan places greater emphasis than was the case in the previous five versions on raising the country's export competitiveness as part of what the Department of Trade and Industry is now calling a smart reindustrialization strategy. But what do we need to do and what are the themes as we move forward? I said it was smart reindustrialization. Uh, we, we, we have identified, as I've, I began to say already, uh, five big drivers uh, of uh, industrial development. The infrastructure program has got to continue to be a major driver, uh, not just of, the, of economic development in general, but industrialization in particular. Localization, uh, as we, uh, that local, localization has got to proceed and in fact uh, to, to be strengthened. Beneficiation, as I've already, me already mentioned. Uh, we've got to have a combination of domestic demand regional integration and export performance uh, and, um, and, and, and uh, that linked to, uh, uh, to uh, a greater quid pro quo in the deployment of incentives and then industrial uh, financing uh, with a greater uh, uh, coherence between uh, the incentive programs and also uh, the uh, industrial financing from the Industrial Development Corporation. That's Creamer Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insight into South Africa's real economy.